Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online. We are discussing how God takes care of us in the face of our enemies. No matter what, our enemies cannot triumph over us when we hide under God's covering. Amen? All right. So now let's go on with the word of God, Psalms chapter 18. We're starting at verse one. We'll just follow along as the Holy Ghost leads. I will love thee, O Lord, my God, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth, devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. He did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him with dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, this thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and shot out lightnings and discomforted them. Then the channels of water were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke. O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Verse 19, he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Mm, I'm stopping there for right now. When I was praying about the message, what the Lord gave me was, I could see this illustration. Picture the earth below and picture you being on the earth at first. Now, this is an image of how God raises you up above your enemies in so many ways, figuratively, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, all kind of ways, circumstantially, however God uses to do so, he will raise you above your enemies. Your enemies will be beneath your feet. Check this out. So here you are being attacked from all sides like mad dogs. Your enemies are coming at you. They're yapping at you. They're nipping at you. They're barking at you. They're biting at you. They're scratching at you. They're trying to cut you down. Slice you into a million pieces till there's nothing left of you. And it's for different reasons. Some resent you. Some are jealous of you. Some are intimidated by you, so they want to intimidate you so you don't see the fear they have of you. All kind of reasons. But listen, here you are trying to guard yourself and you're trying to keep your heart from feeling hatred and resentment at the same time and you're crying out to God from the pit of your soul. And what happens? As you're crying out to God, Lord, save me, Lord, deliver me, Lord, heal my heart, take the hurt out. Lord, don't let me get angry and bitter, Lord, help me. All of a sudden, picture this now, all of a sudden your feet slowly leave the ground 
and you're starting to ascend up slowly. You're moving higher and higher. And the enemies that were scratching and, and clawing and, 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 and kicking and barking at you, nipping at you, they're still on the ground like turkeys versus a bird. So here you are, you're rising up ever so slowly. And now they can't even reach you. They're, they're scraping, they're, they're swinging at you, but they can't touch you. And when you look at yourself, you realize you don't even have any scratches on you. They didn't, they didn't break any blood. They didn't draw blood. They didn't cause any damage to you. You just felt the sting of all that hateful atmosphere. And as you're going higher and higher, your enemy below, all that crowd of enemy that was attacking you, whether they be demons, people, or a combination of all the below, they're all down there reaching, scratching, digging, but they can't touch you. And the further up you go, the smaller they appear to be. Isn't that something? How small the enemy gets, the higher up you move, the further away you move, the more you put your attention on God and you reach up for God to pull you out of the miry water. What happens? The enemy below is getting further and further and they're looking smaller and smaller. And now you realize they're not the threat you thought they were. They're not the powerful opponent you pictured them to be. Yes, they're not as dangerous as you always felt they were. Why? Because now you're out of their reach. Because of God pulling you out, they cannot touch you any longer. They cannot affect you any longer. They have no more power over you, your reactions, your feelings, your circumstances. They have no power whatsoever. The further up you get, now they're starting to look like little ants scrambling around on the ground. And you realize just how small and powerless your enemies have been all this time. But you're seeing it. You're seeing it for the first time. It's like <clears throat> you finally got the memo. It's crystal clear. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Look at that. And all those obstacles in your way, all those enemies scratching, digging, clawing, biting, nipping, they're so far away they can't touch you. You're at the point now you're so high up, you can't even hear them anymore. Now that's something. When people say things to you, when people do things to you, when little snide remarks and little little cutting comments and all of this little nonsense that the enemy uses people to attack you with, and all of a sudden you're so high up you can't even hear them. Like, what you say? No, you don't even bother asking because you weren't meant to hear it in the first place. You weren't meant to feel it in the first place. It wasn't meant to touch you. All those fiery darts hit the shield of faith and it cannot penetrate you. It can't come close to you because you're under the covering of God's protection. That's what I love about God. He will raise you up so high that people's little pettiness has no more effect on you. And their pettiness appears to be smaller and smaller and smaller until it becomes almost microscopic and it's just insignificant. It's not even worthy of a response. It's not worthy of you being hurt over. It's not worthy of a second thought. You just dismiss it, shake it off and keep on rising to the occasion God has called you to because he has called you to bigger and better things than the pettiness that's scrambling on the ground beneath you. He's called you to bigger and better things, greater things than the little petty nonsense, the little nini nini stuff that goes on at ground level. You don't have to waste your time with that anymore. <laughs> that's what I love. And the reason is, as the Bible says, because God delights in you. That's why. You don't have to worry about what they think, what they say, or what they do. 
He'll bring it all to naught. As Joseph said in the Old Testament, he said to his brothers who were jealous of him because they knew his father loved him above all because he was a child of, of his father's old age. And they saw the coat of many colors the father made for him. And they just wanted to get rid of him. Why? Jealousy. They resented the favor he had with their father. Instead of enjoying the love they got from their father, they wanted to stop what Joseph was getting from their father. They wanted to null and void him. So they decided, they ultimately decided to sell him off to slavery. Now, what Joseph said after all those years, 16 or some odd years, being in prison off of lies was when God elevated him, he was elevated so high that nothing could touch. You remember that old song, Can't Touch This? Remember that? They couldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole because God elevated him and promoted him so high that there was nothing they could do that would hurt him anymore. He was the master one. He was the one in control right next to Pharaoh, was he not? And what did he tell his brothers? What you did, you meant for bad. God used for good. Not only for my good, but for your good too. That's how loving God is. He'll use you to finally make your enemies wake up and realize if they want to move up, they got to come through you to do it. The very one they didn't want to be bothered with, the very one they wanted to eliminate, God will use you to save their behinds. That's the beautiful part. And some of you will be saved. I mean, some of you will see your enemy saved, not by your hand but by circumstances where God says to the froward, I will show myself froward. And then some of your enemies will be saved only through you. They have got to humble themselves and come to you like his brothers had to humble themselves and go to Joseph. And God will only acknowledge some of your enemies if they come through you first. Then they have to go through Christ to get to God. But the first door they'll have to go through is you. Now, don't, don't revel in it. Don't trip. Don't get the big head. Don't look at him sideways. And, mm -hmm, yeah, look at you now. How you like me now. Don't go there. Keep your spirit humble and full of love and compassion and mercy. And God will continue to elevate and promote and raise you up. The more he knocks off of you, the more of your flesh, the more of your sinful ways he gets rid of, the lighter you are, the lighter you are, the higher you will rise, baby, in everyone's eyes. Figuratively and possibly physically. You never know how God's going to do that. So be encouraged because no matter what they want to think, no matter what lies are spoken into your life, no matter what little snide remarks and hurtful comments, no matter how many cruel acts are done, no matter how badly you're disrespected and you're disappointed and discouraged by these words, by these acts, by these attitudes, no matter what. God's got the last laugh, baby. Now he is allowed to do the laughing. And he'll be saying to your enemy, how you like him now? How you like her now? Uh-huh, yeah, they're in my hands and you can't snatch them out. That's right, because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of God, the body of Christ. It cannot prevail against us individually or collectively. So know that you are a child of the Most High King. You are a peculiar people. You are royal priesthood. And you are immune. If you only believe and walk in it, baby, you are immune. 
no matter what trap the enemy lays for you, God is able to snatch you out in time, plenty of time. And you are always safe with God. That's what he means when he says in Psalms 91, I will honor him and show him my salvation. What God is saying is, I'm going to show you how I got you covered. I'm going to demonstrate to you. You're going to see it in every corner of your life, how I take care of mine. I will show him my salvation. Now, what I want you to think about is the love of God. I'm going to continue reading real quick, and we'll see where the Lord takes this. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to start back at 16, just so you get the feeling of that being pulled up. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. A lot of times when the Lord talks about waters, he's talking about crowds of people. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me, just like he did with Joseph. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. Hath he recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Now, that doesn't mean that we live the perfect life. What it means is we did not wickedly, we all depart from his ways from time to time. Heart, mind, body, soul, action. Yeah, we do that. But for the most part, we are striving to live in obedience. And that's the point he's letting you know. He recognizes that you are striving in spite of your failures, you're striving towards obedience to him. For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him. I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. Oh, here it is. <laughs> according to the cleanness of my hands and his eyesight. And I love this. Listen to this. <clears throat> With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. See, that's what I love about God. He's going to treat you the way you treat others. Ain't that something? With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. But this is the bottom line right here. And with the frowood, thou wilt show thyself frowood. Can't touch this. Dee, 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 dee. Dee, 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 dee. Can't touch this. Listen. God will turn the same face towards your enemy that they have turned towards you. God is a vengeful God. That's why he says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. It ain't for you to pay that vengeance back. It ain't for you to be spiteful. It ain't for you to go toe to toe. It ain't for you to retaliate. It ain't for you to kick butt. That's God's job. And when he does it, do you, you dare not celebrate or he will turn that right back on you. Remember that too. All right. <laughs> but you know, you got God on your side. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 27. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Let me share this with you real quick. Do you know there are times, this is coming to me right now, there are times when it will look as if you are, how can I say it right? It'll look as if you are conceding the victory. You are giving, moving back so your enemy can win that particular little victory. There are times when it looks like they got the upper hand. They got the power. 
They got the clout. They got everybody on their side. Everybody believes their lies about you. They're looking at you sideways because of what that person did or that person said. Don't worry about that. That's not your concern. God has a way of using one tool to change opinions. And that tool is time. You keep your mouth shut. You keep your fists and your weapons in your pocket. And you allow God to raise you up in due season. And when God does the raising, baby, he will outdo anything you could have done. He will outsay anything you could have said. Because he's God and you're not. So trust him to handle your enemies. Trust him to show you out and to vindicate you when you feel like you're losing all in the sight of everyone, when you feel like you're being humiliated with your tail tucked between your legs. Don't worry about it. Rejoice in the fact that you're being persecuted for Christ's sake. Just take it on the chin. Let your tears run. Reach up to God. Keep on stepping. Keep your focus on God. And as long as your focus is on God, you will do what Peter did. You'll be able to walk on water, baby. In other words, picture the water as all your enemies. And you're walking on top of their heads, getting where you got to go. You're not stomping on them out of spite. You're just walk using their heads to get on forward. God will use your enemies to thrust you forward. Listen, he gave me this illustration years ago. This is what your enemies do. Picture, you got a bow and arrow, all right? The bow and the string is what the enemy uses to pull you back. They grab a hold to that bow and you're the arrow. And what they're doing, God has you aimed high and forward, high and far. You're the arrow. Remember that. Picture the arrow now. But the bow and the string, the, those are the people and the, and the demons and the enemies of God working against his people, working against you. And how do they work against you? They pull that string further and further back. Why? Because they want to pull you back. You're the arrow. So they're pulling that arrow back. They see it's supposed to go forward, but no, they're pulling it back with all their strength because they don't want that arrow to get where it's supposed to go. But what they don't realize, and God blinds their minds to this, even though it happens every time, the further back they pull that string, sooner or later they got to let go. And when God says let go and they let go, that arrow, the further back they pulled you, the further forward you're going to fly, baby. The higher you're going to go. That's what I love about God. What the devil meant for your bad, God will use boo, to your good. Amen. You be encouraged. God's got you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. According to Isaiah 54. Don't sit there and fret. Don't sit there and fret. Fear is not of God. God is love and perfect love casts out fear. So you be content and satisfied and feel secure in the love and protection of God because he knows how to take care of what belongs to him. God bless you. You serve a risen savior, baby. He's in the world today. Emmanuel, God with us. God is not only with us, God is for us. Amen? Amen. Amen.